So with these hypersensitive active horses, I do lots of stimulating to, to kind of get rid of that hair trigger. Just climbing on this guy. We'll see where his mind's at today. I'm just trying to get him flexing real, really soft on each side, moving out nice at a trot. He's having a hard time on the start just standing still. So I don't want to try to force him to stand still for too long. Let's see if more I can cause him to want to find that standstill. There you go. Come on. Well, something I've done a lot to prepare this horse for a rider is really work on his sides. You know, because you'd when I first started working with him. You'd touch him on the side, you know, with, with, even without a saddle on. You'd just touch him out on the side, and he would jump up to the rafters. So you're seeing me use an excessive amount of leg here. You know, I'll, I'll get, if you guys are wondering, why are you bumping that horse so much? Why are you, two reasons, with these, with these active-minded horses, I mean, he's bred to be a racehorse. I do a lot of that on the ground, too, with, with flags and with training sticks and all that type of stuff, uh, with flopping stirrups when they're finally wearing the saddle. Because, you know, the, the last thing I want to do is turn this horse back over to the owner and have him jump out of his tracks or, or take off and bolt when, when a leg touches him. Now something else, horses can lose track of you. All right, so again, really important on these sensitive horses. I've got a couple of them here now like that, but they, if they lose track of you and then all of a sudden you move your leg forward a little bit, they can, again, that can set them off. They can jump out of their skin and take off from underneath you. So I use lots of leg, moving it left and right and forward and back. Lots of heavy thump, thump, thump. Um, you know, not too... Well, it, it actually is one of the few cases where I'll actually desensitize a horse a bit to my legs. But again, as the horse's confidence grows, you can start to sensitize them again. And... Something I don't like hearing, because it's it's not true, and it comes from from uh, a lack of experience. Is you know every horse you should be able to just put the reins down and open your hands up and ride them around bridleless. Maybe eventually, you know. But a horse like this, we, you'll be able to do it eventually. But you don't want to do it at the expense of you know a stiff neck, a tight back, um, a hair trigger, or anything like that. So I'm gonna desensitize him first, then resensitize him to where he understands to stay between my legs and my reins. But on the start here, you know, you don't want, I can't stress enough, I don't wanna keep that hair flight trigger in any horse. Yeah, and this works a lot with the off the track thoroughbreds too that I get. Do the, I'll use that same method. I'm doing lots of bending. And really what I'm looking for when I bend a horse like this and ride him on an arc is purity of gait, okay? And what purity of gait does is it keeps your horses out of a flight mindset because the mind, body, and emotions work together. So if I were just going around, again, operating on that hair trigger that naturally comes with this horse that I've worked so hard to take out, he might be going around, but he'd be doing it with a stiff back. You guys can see how he's bending real nicely in this bridle. There's not a bridle, it's a snaffle. He's bending really nicely in the snaffle for the most part. When he gets a little nervous about that, looking out that door there, I just encourage him to step forward into that snaffle and bend. So again, I can't stress enough purity of gait because the mind, body, and emotions work together. I'm not going to start picking up on the bridle yet or anything like that to you collect them up or anything because we just end up with a tight back so we need to right there he's spooking at that horse banging around in the panels over there there's no sense in getting worked up about that there's nothing you're going to do about it just sit calm and encourage him to keep riding through that to find you to find that comfort between your legs that comfort between your reins and what i'll call that is comfort within the structure comfort within the boundaries okay that's what you'll hear me call that so if they can if they can learn to to always look for you, right? If he would have jumped and I would have gotten on his ass about it, 
he might not trust me. Next time he gets nervous, he might get a little amped, a little anxious. All right. Now, how do I address that? That's that's something I address uh, every day to day in the training process. Is I'll expose them to an energy that I'm controlling, and it's going to be bigger than what they're going to run into. I mean, you, you you increase the energy gradually, but it's going to be bigger than the energy that they're going to run into in everyday life. All right. So if you're out in the trail and a deer jumps out in front of you, or a turkey, or coyotes, or whatever you might have. When I was in Virginia, we had black bears. Or in Colorado, we had black bears out there too. But uh, whatever it might be, you can't bring in a black bear in the arena. But I can bring a big energy in the arena, and I can make it happen, I can control it. And I can teach the horse that when it calms down and it finds my boundaries, it finds the structure I'm setting for it, I can really teach that horse to, to start to look for me. And trust me as a leader, trust me as a source of safety, comfort, leadership, and providing responsibility. And the, the main thing I focus on in these first couple months of riding is, can we find purity of gait? Can we start finding some, some shape, some arc? Can we start developing the purity within the walk trot canter and the backup? You know, that's, that's my main focus. There's not a whole lot of patterns. And depending on the horse, you know, it might get to patterns sooner than later. It just, you know, but just as a general approach, that first one to two months is purity of gait. Comfort carrying me forward. But we're gonna take him over to the wall here. See if we can just hook him, hook him to going back and forth a little bit here. Again, I don't, my biggest concern here is not so much a pattern, but can I find purity of gait while we're traveling a straight line? Too often, we uh, ride too many arcs, too many straight lines. We don't straighten our horses out soon enough. All right, so I like to first get the arcs working. And then once I have my horse working on an arc or a circle and they're light, okay, meaning they're supple through their top line, I want to straighten them out as soon as I can. I don't want to start with straightness. If you start with straightness, that's when you can get yourself uh, into some trouble. All right, they start getting suspicious of you out of those two eyes. Looking back and forth, when you get that quick looking back and forth, that's time to sit tight. Okay, I don't want that. So I build their trust. I build their confidence, seeing me out of both eyes by doing lots and lots of arcs. A little jump there, no big deal. What happened is you, you heard my foot hit the wall. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. That's a little silly thing. But as you can see, what I want to point out here is as we're doing these straight lines, I'm flexing him. He's not getting real stiff through his top line. He's staying nice and relaxed and bent. Okay. Also notice too that I'm not allowing this horse to get full speed within a frantic trot. Okay. And that's where, you know, we can go wrong is by allowing a horse to go too fast or get frantic too soon without having that stop be there. All right. So we don't want that frantic forward to ever be an answer. All right. Whatever you allow is what you teach. So, you know, I got a question recently, how do you teach a horse to stop? Well, it's, there's no technique that I can give you because every horse might need something a little bit different. But what I can give you is a mindset. And you've heard me say in my groundwork exercises with the Colts I work with is, you're not allowed to run away. You're not allowed to run away. You're not allowed to run away. What you allow is what you teach. All right, so, so with this horse being bred to be a race horse, we put lots and lots of that desensitizing keep making sure he's aware of my legs and where they're at all the time right teach him to relax to that not to react to it we get him supple left and right okay run away is not going to be an answer in this horse's brain unless he startles there he startled a few times right he comes right back to me there's nothing magical about it it's a mindset you start with from the from the start good boy and yes, I, I use this approach, you know, well, we're about on the off the track thoroughbreds. Yes, I use this approach and it's very effective. Don't jump right to it, of course. It takes lots of time, lots of prep. If he were to get frantic, which he has, he has with me, you know what I do? What I taught him to do. I flex him around. 
I'll flex them around like I did on the start. Before I ever rode off on them, I'll just flex them around. See if we can just do little circles. Or can we just flex and can I rub them to a stop? And if he doesn't stop, that's okay. At least he's he's calm here. Look at him. There he goes. Allow him to find that stop. I really like how he's reaching forward into that trot. Excuse me. Notice he's getting a little nervous out that window. He's kind of looking back to me a little bit. I'm gonna say, let's keep, let's keep going right past it. What I'm not gonna do here is make him go up to it. Let's see what he does here. I'm just gonna keep his nose pointed at it, allow him to drift. Then I'm gonna take his focus back over here. He's focusing out there. I'm gonna say, we're gonna go focus over here. There's that, he's getting a little nervous and frantic. You allow what you teach, or you teach what you allow. I'm not gonna allow him just to go. I'm gonna take him around. Take him around. Take that pressure off. Let's go. See if I can release him towards that scary door. He can look at it. Hey, he got a little closer, a couple feet closer that time. And I don't want to force him right up to it. Good. Good, good, good. I'll ride him away from it. That approach and retreat thing um, is often misunderstood by a lot of people. You don't want to retreat when they're being a coward. You want to retreat with, when they're being brave. He got closer that time than last time, so we'll retreat. Let's come on up here. I'm gonna pay attention. I'm gonna put him on a loose rein, see if he wants to run away from that. He didn't, I like that. And when a horse bolts on you, it's easier said than done, but the best thing to do is drop your reins for a few strides and then take them around. I should say a horse, a green horse, one that doesn't have very many rides on it. Because if they need to move their feet and you bunch up on the reins real quick, they could take you up through the rafters. You don't want to do that. Wow, look how close he got that time. I didn't make him go up to it. Just rode past it a few times, released him towards that scary gate. Might seem like there's not a whole lot of structure to what I'm saying in this lesson here, but there's so much that's coming up within a short amount of time that I need to talk through all of it. There he's starting to get a little frantic, frantic there. That's not purity of gate. I'm going to break that down. Not allowed to do that. Ride him up around the corner here. I ask him to canter. There he's getting a little fast. So I'm just going to bend him. Okay. It's no big deal if he gets fast there. We just got to say, you know, I don't allow. You can canter, but that's not a canter. What he did there was run away. So I don't count that as a gate. We're going to come up here. Frantic. Just going to bend him. Here we go. Ask him to canter a little bit here. Okay, that was softer. Bend him. Good. I'm going to allow him to find some purity here in the trot again. I don't want to necessarily drill that canter because um, purity of gate within the canter is the answer. So I want to, yep, not a very good, we didn't, we didn't really get a departure there, but that's okay. Not going to get on his butt about that. But anyways, I brought him back to the trot for a little bit there because he can find purity of gate within the trot. All right. And that's the answer. Purity of gate's the answer. Not just getting your feet going to where they're running. That's. That's not really the answer. Good. Notice too, when he gets a little frantic there, I'm, I'm softly taking that rain, softly taking that outside rain, tipping his nose, and make sure you push a little bit in your outside stirrup. Because if you're not pushing in your outside stirrup, it'd be easy to get unseated. And pushing off that outside stirrup, it also helps your horse balance as they 
come down into that little turn there. Pretty good. Push into that left stirrup. So anyways, I'm teaching the horse to stop. You know, as soon as he gets frantic, I'm taking a hold of that outside, putting a little bend on him. Just hold until he gets light. Lightness is the answer, purity is the answer. Frantic, it's not gonna be an answer. And I wanna catch that ASAP. So one day if we wanna ride this horse, full speed at a hand gallop across the pastures, across the fields, all right? We wanna be able to do that, but we wanna gallop. We don't wanna run away, there's a difference. Meaning at any point in time, I know I can stop this horse and he knows I can stop him. All right, so he's gonna be mentally, emotionally, and physically right. All right, well, I hope that guy was fun and entertaining and helpful for you guys today. It's a lot of fun for me doing this stuff. And, um, you know, it was a good example. You don't get to see a horse with the, it's all polished up. You know, he's just figuring out how to be ridden. So, all right, hope that was helpful. See you guys next time.